instead of her. So uh, basically, today we're going to be introducing an intro session, which is the first one that we're having this year. Um, Hala it was selected to be the DSC lead for this year. And uh, she, we've really put in a lot of effort with the core team to present this year with a lot of good uh, workshops, uh, projects, and uh, a lot of good webinars. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. So um, we're going to start right now. There's still a lot of people that are joining in. So I'm going to hand the floor to Yusuf. I'm uh, Ralf Sakhat. I'm a core team member of uh, this year's uh, DSC team. And uh, I'm going to let Yusuf present himself, and then we're going to start from there. Hi guys, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Yusuf Abba, third year computer engineering student. I'm also doing a minor in computer science. And I'm currently a trainee in back-end development. In a few moments you would know what, what is back-end development. Um, I have a little uh, of experience. Uh, it's been like two months since I started, I started working uh, with the company and I'm still a trainee and hope you you will enjoy today's session. Okay, so in, in a few seconds, I think Hala has, has joined. She will introduce the session and we'll start. Yes, yes, I'm back. One second. Okay, so uh, thank you, Ralph, for sharing. And uh, sorry, guys, for the inconvenience. My internet just died uh, for no reason. So, uh, yeah, okay, so where were we? I was introducing Yusuf and uh, Ralph, but I guess you got the chance to talk with Yusuf in all cases. So, uh, yeah, so we can start. Before we do that, uh, I just want to say one thing. So, uh, one second. I get the question about the club membership, uh, you know, multiple times a day. So I just wanted to clarify a few things. So uh, this club exists both in the context of LAU as well as the context of um, the DSC, so the Google Club context. So what we're seeing is a lot of people have registered for the LAU club but have not registered um, for the uh, actual DSC club. So um, if, you, if you haven't yet, please do so because that is more efficient. So this is where you will be getting the Google certificates to certify that you are a member. And by registering on the platform, so uh, if you don't know how to do that, we have many posts on our Instagram detailing exactly how that happens. So for those of you who still haven't registered, please do. This way you'll be able to receive um, uh, invites for the events, calendar invites, links, and you won't really miss anything. So it's more general because it's open to everyone. So we're not going to only rely on the LAU, um, on the LAU members. So that club is just you know for LAU official stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. So uh, Peter just sent in the chat box uh, the sign up link. All right. So uh, yeah, let's start. That was really it. So Ralph, you can switch the slides. Yeah, Ralph, we can see the slides. You can switch the slide too. Okay, so uh, this is our drill before every single event. Uh, we have to tell you the following. So we have a zero tolerance policy for harassment of any kind. So please do not enter meets or streams, um, only hoping to comment foul stuff or, uh, or you know, just harass other people. Please always be positive and work together. Um, really it. Okay, so um, yeah, we can then get started with the event. So uh, here we are. All right, so uh, introduction to software engineering, and um, you already know everything, and now we can officially start. So uh, the first question we wanted to ask you guys is what is your major? So we would like you to join this uh, slido.com you know, polling system. So I don't know if you've used slido before. All you need to do is actually just um, you know, scan the QR code that you see on the screen, or just go to the website and enter the code 2171 and let us know what your major really is. And we'll explain the reason for asking uh, right after we see some results. So you can do this just from your phone um, and there's really uh, no problem there. So the first person just answered and said computer engineering. 
uh, five people. Okay, so we see mechatronics. Computer engineering is really big. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, we have some sort of uh, focus in computer engineering, mechatronics, computer science, uh, electrical. Okay, so we sort of see our target audience has uh, some common answers. And uh, yeah, so the reason we were actually asking people's majors is because we wanted to highlight a certain fact that coding is no longer really restricted to uh, only computer engineering. Uh, the reason that is, is because so many disciplines these days require coding and require you to actually know your way around the software. So we can see people with finance and business and um, high school students. So this is really exciting because this is what this presentation is all about. Introducing people, uh, both people who are computer engineering and, you know, other majors, um, you know, that they are in these fields, but also people who are in business and finance and everything else. So yeah, thank you guys for answering. Now the next poll. Um, all right. Okay. So what comes to mind when you think of software engineering? So if you're on the website, this should switch automatically. So you should be able to see the completely new poll. So what really does come to mind when you think of software engineering? And you can type in pretty much anything here. Okay. Code programming. A lot of Googling. Uh, I agree with this one. Yeah, okay. Software development, front and back end. So someone, you know, knows some stuff. You know, it's all essentially the same idea. So uh, we're working with programming, with coding, and we're developing software. So uh, no worries if you don't know how to answer that question, because this is really what this event is all about. So yeah, let's move on. So what is software engineering? Software engineering is essentially the art of writing code and building software. So uh, we want to give you guys a sort of intro guide to be able to figure out exactly um, the different components or the different parts within software engineering. Because inside software engineering, we have different developers who have different roles. When I say developers, I mean coders, obviously. And these are people who are working on building the software. There are people involved in front end, back end, databases, and full stack. And also, another thing that we decided to include within this um, presentation is also the different subfields of AI. Now, why is that? This is because so many people are learning code specifically for AI or for machine learning or for data science. And if you're still confused about exactly the difference between these different um, you know, fields or subfields of AI, no worries, because this is also another part of this event. So for now, we'll start with the standard software engineering, building software, building websites, building apps, and then we'll move on to AI. Okay. And another question we want to answer before we actually start by describing these things is why software engineering? So uh, you probably already know this, it's a really growing field with more and more jobs every day. And it's becoming, um, you know, there is an overflow of jobs with respect to how many people are actually doing. Another thing about software engineering is that you don't really need a computer science or computer engineering degree. What you do need is some skills. So uh, if you go online, if you search for, uh, you know, on YouTube or anywhere else, like you can search how I became a software engineer without a CS degree. Some people attended boot camps. Some people were self-taught. Uh, this is really how everything went. So yeah, this is something that could keep you excited, especially if you're in a different major. So we have here people from business and finance. These actual disciplines are really requiring code these days. And uh, if you see the table here, this is essentially like a brief summary of these different salary ranges for software engineers. And this should maybe uh, encourage you or motivate you to really join this field and, uh, you know, get start getting interested. Okay, so uh, Yusuf will start with part one, which is the back end. And uh, yeah, Yusuf, you can start talking. Okay, so guys, let's start. Uh, our first field is a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, so what is back end development? So, a uh, back end developer. Uh, has many tasks, yani, and do, and do ka, kaza job, kaza Okay, next slide, please. 
first first thing بيعملها a back end developer it's the databases okay databases are really important databases the when all your data is saved يعني for example you you developed an application Hell application. Let's take the example of Instagram. So first, when you sign up, you will put all your information like username, password. But then, when you have an account, I see wrote nice little posts like pictures. You will have uh, comments, likes. Okay, so all this information should be saved somewhere. Okay, uh, and this somewhere in the databases. Hell, okay. please uh, mute uh, your mic. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, muting now. Okay, so this place is the databases. So uh, and databases, it's not an easy task. It's a very complicated task. Uh, databases should have uh, relations between them, and you should know how to build them. Uh, so the job of the back end is first to build the databases of an application, and building these da databases. Uh, هي حسب شوي حسب الكلاينت what he want و relations you have to do them يعني حسب الكلاينت بيقول I want to let the user مثلا for example Insta كمان to let the user share this picture يعني حخليه to share it okay so كل هول بدهم يتعلقوا how the data is managed وهول هال management لل data بتصير بين relations so uh, when creating the databases, hey, the backend developer will do the relations with and will and he will build his code based on the databases. So he will he will save his data He will fetch the data and uh, process the data also. And of course, databases should be secured for applications. For uh, we have banking applications. Okay, there is a lot of uh, important uh, information. In them, so as a as a secure the databases, cares as a how one can access them or manage data as he wish. Had it, it's it's really uh, it's really important to secure them. Had it, mostly the so also come in. The job of the backend developer is to secure these databases. So next, uh, next is uh, the development of the code. So mainly, the backend develop the logic of the code. Okay, our she he will he will he will uh, you know, everything you see behind the scenes is built by the uh, backend developer. Okay, first of all, he will connect his code to the databases. Second, uh, he, will, you know, he will perform all the functionalities of the website or application. Okay, so best to clarify when, I, when I'm talking about back end development, the uh, front end, or Hellishy, I'm talking for all kinds of applications and websites, everything. Okay, Ooh, okay, so. Uh, the backend developer will uh, build the code that performs the logic, the logic of everything. So, again, Instagram. When I click to use Abiyad's account, I will have all his pictures with with the comments and all all of this. So, this this is the job of the backend to to specify in the in his code. When I click this button, I want this data to be fetched. Okay, sometimes it will be processed. He have to process data. And all the logic, all, all the logic is done by the back-end developer. Uh, so so uh, basically, uh, let's take the example of uh, a calculating uh, website, so like integral calculator. All the, the process of calculating the integral, if you ever used it, uh, is uh, should be done by the back end. So he, his logic be behind everything, he builds the structure of the application and how it will function. And there's many languages uh, used in, in back end development, mainly high level languages, ob uh, object oriented 
also like Java, Python, Python. Hala uh, in his pick, and it's Python. Uh, the new updates and everything. Python is uh, have the highest ranks, and C sharp, C plus plus, all of that. Uh, there is a lot of uh, languages that can be used. Uh, it depends on the Baranahke in real world, the Sharak Kifitsir, Jmelan, Kil Shirke will have a specific language, ma a specific framework, Mahfud with a Sidjani framework, Tiktub Fiya has all of uh, the applications. And if it's a software development uh, company, Okay, حجمان أن تعتمد على one language, but no, it's the same. Uh, at the end of the day, you will, for coding and building applications, you will rely on your skills. Uh, the language uh, it doesn't matter. يعني if you if you if you're good at coding, you know, تعرفوا بس Java. It doesn't matter. You, you learn very quickly the syntax of the other language. Okay, so that's mainly the backend development. Uh, it's it's uh, for me personally, I really like uh, backend. So it's building the logic and uh, the logic behind everything. So next, uh, Ralph, please next. Okay, we have database administrator. Okay, like like I said. Databases are very important uh, when building applications. So uh, we'll have some some companies, not all companies, have a database administrator. So please next up. Uh, the job of the database administrator is mainly to build on, only build the databases. Okay, so so he's he's not working on any code. He uh, of course, you know, to build the database, you should sometimes uh, write code. I don't know if you guys are experienced in the databases, but you learn it uh, if you're computer engineering, minor computer science, computer science, something like this. Okay, uh, we can learn it on your own uh, before taking the database systems uh, for LEU students. I learn databases on my own. Okay, so. Uh, Database administrator, main job, only databases. Most companies that hire database administrator are mainly very big companies. Okay, so uh, normal companies, average companies, uh, that uh, software development companies don't, re don't always have uh, database administrators. So they're building, they can build big applications, but uh, they don't need uh, a database administrator just to uh, to uh, manage the databases. The backend developers can manage uh, manage the databases. So a database administrator should uh, should make sure that uh, the databases are secure. So uh, mainly, and yeah, check the entire database administrator like YouTube. Akid Andun, many database administrators, uh, Instagram, big companies. So they have a really important data and really complex databases because this is a really uh, hard task. But you know, there is people that really, really like working in, in databases. There is, a, there is a lot of logic and relationships. Okay, so uh, his job, the database administrator, is uh, really to make sure the databases are secure, to uh, to maintain them. These these big companies will always maintain the databases. They always have updates, like uh, like YouTube and uh, I don't know Facebook. They always have updates, so they'll always uh, maintain their databases. And uh, of course, they should be secured. Uh, the more the database administrator and the developers are skilled, the more they can secure the databases. And one more thing uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, how how you you will work if you if you intended to be a software developer in a, in general. Uh, I think everyone will start as an employee. 
Okay, so hey, everyone, and the people can also work all their, their lives as employees. You know, like the first slide that software developers, you know, that's that's the really nice salaries. Okay, so um, and uh, in, uh, in companies, we see the shuttle key, there is the back end department. They have a team. Okay, so they have a new project, like a new application to build for a client. Okay, so they have they will have a technical lead, which will uh, give his developers, uh, engineers, computer science, Allah, his developers their tasks. يعني هاي أسم الشغل على كذا كذا developer, and each one will take a task. Okay, so you can be a junior developer and a senior تكون مسؤول عن كذا. لحظة في في يعني الواحد في ترقى قد ما في in this domain. Okay, so uh, we said you know big mainly big companies uh, hire database administrators. Next, okay, so part three front end. Uh, Yusuf, Yusuf, okay. sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, just want to check. Does anyone have any questions? You know, feel free to ask. You can always oh, yeah. type in the yes, chat yes. box, and you can. Uh, Interrupt. So now is your chance to interrupt. So tell yes. us if you have any questions. Guys, feel free to ask Arabic. Okay. So uh, someone said, "What types of databases are there? Is SQL one of them?" Yes, of course. SQL is one of them. Like fee now nowadays there is two main uh, main uh, fields mesh fields there's two main types of databases there is in a new one in mission seven type is my uh, no sql databases okay or fiana relation relational databases okay so relational databases in the most uh, used databases من ال إذا كنتوا مثلاً ميكاترونيكس كمبيوتر إنجينيرينج ميكاترونيكس ما بعرف كمبيوتر ساينس ماينر إن كمبيوتر ساينس يو لرن إن ألا يو ماي إس كي إل سو إس كي إل في كذا كذا إس كي إل سب فيلز ب إس كي إل فيكم تتعلموا حياة واحدة ومين اللي في أوراكل أوكي وفي كذا واحدة سو ماي إس كي إل إس كي إل هي لا أوراكل Oracle, شو عملت Oracle عنده language أو محل to build databases that is very professional. يعني it's used, it's very powerful. Okay, but but it's not for free. It can it can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to use Oracle's databases. Okay, so they created MySQL and there is many SQL, SQL Lite, SQLite. Uh, for free, for uh, to use them, they're powerful, but not as much as uh, Oracle. But uh, where I work, uh, it's a very professional company, and we build they build big application, and they use my SQL, so can use it for free. Okay, and uh, no SQL databases. It's another thing you can learn it. You can watch it, uh, watch it on YouTube. I it's not really used worldwide, so you can you can learn more on it uh, online. Okay, so okay, uh, no, that's it for us. Okay, that's um, it. Someone no, someone said uh, what's the difference between SQL and no SQL? Um, to be honest, I'm going to answer this question. There okay. is a large variety of differences, and I. We cannot really explain to you no SQL without explaining SQL first um, and going a bit more in. So um, you're going to have to be patient with us and hopefully we'll pull an event uh, specifically on databases and we'll explore the different types of databases. Uh, okay, because, you know, just for the sake of time. And if you want, we can uh, follow up with you. Uh, no problem after the event. All right, Joe. Uh, sorry, Yusuf. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like like Hala said, we'll uh, we'll make workshops and everything uh, that will help you practice. You know, to get hands on on practical things. 
it's, that will be very helpful uh in a very healthy is if you learned if you did if you ever did a workshop about mysql or something like this can we you can use it to build an in a website an application you can use it everywhere okay so it will be very helpful okay so if someone have a question he can interrupt me again okay or i'll continue okay you can open your mics if you want. Okay, Ali Jalif, do you advise someone to start coding in the back end? If so, which language or do you prefer starting with? Uh, like, it, it doesn't matter. Personally, I recommend the. Uh, uh, Yusuf, sorry for interrupting you, but I think that my, maybe we can better answer this question when we present the front end part. That way, they will okay, know the difference okay, between both. Okay. So, so everyone we'll keep will that have a later. Okay, okay, okay. So, guys, front end, part three, front end. What is front end? Uh, please, Ralph, thanks. Okay, so mainly a front end developer will develop the user interface. The user interface is everything you see on the screen uh, when you open uh, Facebook on your phone okay or on your browser everything everything you see as graphics or as user interface is uh, is is created by the front end developer okay um and the front the front end developer uh, work mainly like a back end they work as a team okay so you can always work on your own okay but, but in general uh, work in companies is done like this you are teams so everything you see is uh, everything you see now on, on your browser on uh, on on whatever yeah, on websites come in i'm back here i'm talking front end application of any kind desktop applications uh, mobile applications uh, websites uh, everything uh, everything has a back-end developer that uh, developed this application or website or whatever okay so uh, front-end languages differ slightly from back-end there's many languages that uh, you can code and uh, can code in back-end and code uh, front-end for example python in python you can code for back end and you can do user interfaces for front end that's why python is very powerful and uh, you got slightly different uh, languages there is orient object oriented languages and there's uh, uh, not object oriented languages like html css that are languages for the design okay so and if you if you ever inspect an element on a website, you'll see your the HTML and CSS code. Okay, but you'll never see the logic behind this, the things. Okay, so uh, no, uh, before before full stack, I'll first one, one minute. Okay, there's there's also uh, apart from user interface, there's user experience okay um i'll talk about user experience at the end but but let me explain more how work is done in real life for a front-end developer okay so as a front-end developer you michelle that your your task is not um to develop hekman rasak to have an inspiration okay so so you're in a company working as a front-end developer you the a new project came a client wants to build a banking application okay so the front end department uh, does not say okay let's build the application and start uh, making the user interface let's uh, let's make something beautiful let's make something professional it's not done like this a developer shouldn't have the inspiration to to build something beautiful or whatever okay so how it's done uh, the client the bank, for example, that wants to uh, to create a banking application for Laila, 
will come to your company and uh, she'll hire the client should hire a graphic designer or a designer of any kind okay this graphic designer will draw each corner and each page of the application or website or whatever okay so the client will specify uh, the client and his graphic designer will specify how the user interface should be user interface which is everything you see every page every uh, button kill kill button kill uh, slide كل شيء كل شيء كيف حيكون شكله the colors if you can drop it if you can drag it إذا بتتحرك هالبطن إذا لا okay um, the client will specify this and the graphic designer will draw the pages of the application or website and as a front end developer you get you'll get the sketch or the drawing of the graphic designer and you will implement on, based on the sketch so um, in my first year of university, I started a, a course, an online course on Udemy. I don't know if you heard about it, but it's a very good platform. Okay, so a front-end development course for websites. So trust me, guys, the inspiration to build something from scratch, it's not, it's not difficult. It's difficult, but it's doable. But it's not mainly your job as a developer in a company. It's not your job to have inspiration or to build something on your own. So the client will have the sketch for the design of the whole app, every page, every corner in your website or application, and you'll have to develop it. And one more thing, your job is to, for every button or everything that will fetch you data or will process data or will do something okay the front end developer will uh, specify for the back end uh, department what this button should return okay so for insta instagram for example when, uh, yes, when yes, yes. Uh, can, I, can i cut you off and because yes, there, there are some interesting questions and i feel okay. like we should address them um, okay, so uh, someone is uh, saying that they're a mechanical engineer and they would like to know what courses can help them reach a level where they can make a program or develop software. Um, okay. And I asked, I asked if they meant uni or online, and they said online. And someone else also asked, uh, no, we'll, we'll get to that later, okay. okay. Um, so uh, if, you, if you want, I'll answer him. Okay. So, uh, you know, okay, so even if you are a mechanical engineer, don't feel like you are at a disadvantage. Because Aslan, and I'm speaking from experience of being a computer engineer. And I'm sorry, guys, for the background noise, but I had to move for a better internet. Okay, so even as us computer engineers, we learn like maybe uh, two or three courses where we actually really learn how to code. But even then, it's really nowhere near enough. And it's not enough to teach you how to build software. Um, although later courses do help, but uh, even then, you'll find most of us have really learned online. So uh, to learn online, I would suggest you can use YouTube, you can use Coursera courses, or even Udemy courses. Now, Udemy courses are not necessarily made by professionals, so it's not always uh, the best choice. Um, for, for me, I, I suggest you can go towards, uh, I'm going to type it actually, so freecodecamps.org. And this is, um, I know so many people who learned how to code there, whether it's learning code from scratch, so writing your first ever line of code, to building, you know, high-scale software as well as building applications. And another thing is that we're here, so uh, we'll be bringing in so many experts to teach you web dev, app dev, and other things, so stay tuned for that. So we hope we can do our part in that regard. Um, yeah, so he's saying that he's heard that there are uh, Python and machine co learning courses on Coursera. That's very true. There are Python and machine learning courses. Yeah, also, yes, everywhere. Also, in also uh, in a few days, so on Friday, we have the first event in our machine learning series where we'll be talking, we'll, we'll explain Python for complete beginners. So anyone here who's interested in learning Python, Feel free to attend that. You'll receive promotions on that one um, on fr uh, tomorrow for Friday, and there's there'll be there will be more to teach you machine learning with Python. Okay, so uh, we hope you, we answered your question. 
Now others are asking, would you recommend starting in an easier language like Python or learning a tougher language like C++? Uh, it really depends. So uh, it really depends where, what you want to do. So now uh, you've seen some of the languages that can be used to build websites or build you know, front end and back end. Later, you'll see some languages that will help with AI. So if that's essentially your goal, feel free to you know, start with Python, for example. Okay. But can I add something? More yeah, sure. There's not a language that is tougher than another, okay? So high-level languages are mainly the same, only they differ in syntax and in little details. But if you're comparing Python to C++, okay, it's C++, you cannot say C++ is tougher because Python statements or Python syntax is uh, simpler or you can perform um, easy tasks simpler with like two statements only you will have 10 statements okay it's not it's not that c++ is, is tougher that's not uh, that's not it okay uh, it's basically the same uh inta Owitak as a developer will be by build how to build the application how do you, to build your code and uh, your logic skills and yes your coding skills mainly i don't i don't think the language uh, matters when developing software so that's it you can but uh, i recommend to to learn python or java if, you, if it's your first language because they're the most languages uh, used okay so there there was a question uh, i started reading before moving to, to front end uh, do you advise someone to start coding in the back end if so which language or do you prefer starting by front end okay um uh, it doesn't matter if you want to start coding but personally i have ex more experience in back end no, currently I'm a trainee. I'm not an official employee yet. I'm trainee as a company as back end. I think for coding, it's better personally to start as back end developer. Okay, so you learn how, you know, mainly how the application is built, how applications are built. The application is built in a different way, but you learn how to structure your code how to build logic, how to create databases, how to connect them to your code, uh, how to process data. Uh, this, yeah, there's uh, multiple structures for code. You learn everything. And I, I advise to start as a back end, but then you can easily switch to front end. You know, it doesn't matter. I, I know a lot of people that are working with me as back end. They were front end and vice versa. So, but I recommend to start as back end. Any uh, learn which language you can learn any language. Like if you want Java or Python, Python maybe. It doesn't matter. And the logic is the same. So yeah. if you if you're skilled in Java, okay, and you're hired by a company that uses Python, okay, you will be you will be training for a couple of months. But if you're skilled you will succeed, uh, you will give a good performance. One more thing for applying to jobs as software developer, um, the, the company, and it, it's not really important, it, and it, it's not the major, um, the, and it, the major uh, requirement for companies to have a developer that can write many languages and if on your CV, okay, I can write Python, Java, C++, it, it's not really important. It's important, but the most important part is your skills, your experience, and many your skills. If I want to talk, I will not talk about jobs here in Lebanon. I, there's a lot of exceptions with the economic crisis or everything. Oh, I, you know, outside the country, if you want Canada, USA, uh, developers, uh, developers are very uh, quickly hired based on their performance. So you can enter as a junior 
and within one month if you're delivering a good performance within one month you will be a senior developer okay so everything is uh, depends yeah, on yeah, the skills. Uh, you said just for the sake of time let's uh, okay. go on yeah, let's move on. okay we we'll continue the, the we'll take more questions at the end okay hi guys how are you uh so i'm going to present the first step so basically up to now we've discussed the back end and the front end and the databases so when you want to be a back end engineer the only ways that you have is the back end how do you present the logic of the code when you want to be a front end uh, developer you basically just worry about the looks of things about the user experience uh, ui ux and all of this which we're going to go into details right now uh, but when you're a full stack engineer or developer, you basically need to link all of this together because this is what you're going to do from start to scratch. You're going to be the back end and the front end developer. And this is basically what a full stack uh, developer is. So as you can see in this diagram, uh, the full stack developer, like we've talked about my uh, SQL for uh, the databases, there's the, the PHP, HTML, JavaScript, Python, C++, all of those languages uh, and tools that you need to be a full-stack developer. It's basically what you have as a front-end and a back-end combined, okay? So um, many people start to ask themselves, what languages should I use, which is best? It's like, honestly, sometimes some languages are generally easier than others, but what a full uh okay Ralph, we can't hear you you're cutting off uh no worries so uh, are you back can you hear me now yeah yeah we can hear you can you hear me now yeah yeah we can hear you Okay, sorry, the country is very good Wi-Fi. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, um, imagine I give you a set of three languages, an Arabic, uh, English, French, whatever you want. And I tell you choose one of them that you want to use for your daily lives. You can't choose one based on others, but what you need to pick as a starting point is what you are most comfortable with. So for me, for example, I started off with Java, and then I moved on to Python, uh, HTML, JavaScript, uh, learning PHP and such. So it's basically just a starting point for you for your initial language. And some languages cannot be used for all the tools. But when you understand, as you said previously, the logic behind how a code should be written, what are the steps you need to follow, and all of that, it becomes very easy to learn other languages. You just need to learn syntax, how to write the code, as in what uh, commas to put, what uh, semicolons and all of that. That just becomes memorizing at the end but the logic once you have it for one programming language most of the time it's very easy to understand any other language so basically as a we're going to for the first stack i'm going to show you let me just change the window i'm sharing just one moment we're going to show a live example uh just for some reason it's lagging uh, Ralph, would uh, turning off your camera help for the sake of bandwidth? So uh, that's what I'm going to maybe. do. Yes. Yeah. But it's not stopping the presentation. I don't know why. Yeah. So uh, we figured out today that we will meet. Uh, you know, we face some issues. So no worries, guys. We'll be streaming to YouTube from now on, just like our old, uh, our previous event. So. To make it uh, easier for and Hala, can you just share for one moment so that it interrupts my screen sharing because I'm unable yeah. to stop the presentation. Yeah, one second.
So yeah, just like Adnan just said in the chat, so he started off with Python and then C++ and now he can just move Uh, okay, guys, so it seems Raf's internet uh, is gone. So uh, no worries. Here, like, he was just simply explaining what full stack really is. So uh, if you want, we can move on with the presentation and then have uh, Ralph return. Or, um, Yusuf, can you really, just really quick, say what full stack is? No need for any examples. Okay. Just say it real quick. Yes. Okay, uh, guys. Mainly, full stack is uh, a full stack developer is a developer that uh, does the job of the back end and the job of the front end. So he'll write the code for back end and front end. So he'll build the logic and the databases and the user interface. So he he front uh, full stack will do both front end and back end. So yeah, yeah. that that's really it. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll take more questions towards the end and perhaps explain more things. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move on with uh, the presentation and then uh, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to uh, share. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I yeah, disconnected. Yeah, hi, Rad. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we, so Yusuf covered exactly what a full stack developer is. Um, do you still want to share your example? We can move on. It doesn't really matter. We're, we're at uh, as you wish, I'm ready to share. All right, you can share your example real quick, so give it one minute. Okay. So basically, I'm going to share with you uh, an eBay tab. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay uh, I think it's better yeah. if you continue. Yeah. Let's, let's just move on. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, if we can okay. uh, just pull up the example, okay? So I'm going to move on with the presentation and then uh, we can. Uh, so basically, the service and this is really uh, yeah. the so. I, I muted you. Okay. All right, so let me just share and uh, we'll continue. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen. So uh, now I'm going to go and present the final part. So the part five is actual the uh, subfields of AI. So a lot of people are interested in code, but not necessarily building software. So not necessarily building and deploying websites or applications. People, recently, especially in recent years, people are mainly interested in AI. So uh, we're going to ask you for another poll. So uh, if you still have the website open on your phone or wherever else you opened it, and again, sorry for the background noise, um, check it out because there should be a new poll on the screen. So uh, we're asking what comes to your mind when you think of AI or artificial intelligence. So um, Google Assistant. Yeah, you know, as a DSC, uh, this is awesome. So Sophia. Uh, robotics, machine learning. Um, yeah, machine learning is a really big one. Okay, Siri, Jarvis. Uh, okay, so people are into Iron Man. So am I, by the way. So uh, yeah, um, neural networks, smart homes, intelligence made by humans. Yeah, and basically just intelligent computers. This is really what people think of. People think of the robots or computers who talk to you and tell you stuff. Yeah, that's really it. So uh, we'll explain, we'll go deeper into that and we'll say exactly what the difference is between AI and machine learning. So as you can see, machine learning is taking up a huge part of the screen. Okay, so AI. AI is essentially just the subfield of computer science where programs make smart decisions. These programs behave similar to the human brain. So they're smart, they're rational, they're autonomous, they're capable of performing tasks sort of on their own. That's really the first thing you think of and they have an understanding of their environment. This is the broadest term for artificial intelligence. The thing about the words artificial intelligence, they're a bit hard to define, especially because there's so many different uh, subfield or sub, sub problems within it that people don't really know exactly uh, what to give it. It's just like a big umbrella term for many things within it, okay? 
So some of the examples, some of them are very similar to the things that you guys mentioned in the poll. So we have uh, facial recognition, so to be able to determine you know, who's the person in front of the camera. Self-driving cars, so I'm a bit surprised no one said that because usually it's the first thing people think of. So, you know, smart self-driving cars and recommender systems. So you guys know that when you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or whatever and you see ads and it's just like literally about something that you're really interested in but somehow they just knew what, what ad to show you. Uh, this is because of really, really, really smart uh, recommender systems, which sort of recommend to you movies based on the movies you like, uh, products based on the products you like, and so on. Okay, so uh, ignore that. Okay, so some sub problems of AI. Like I said, AI is an um, umbrella term of you know smaller sub problems. One category of sub problems is computer vision. Computer vision. So if you're a developer and you want to go into AI, you you don't necessarily have the skills you won't necessarily have all the skills to build a chatbot and build a facial recognition system and build a self-driving car. There are many different sub-problems. One of them is computer vision. Computer vision is basically everything related to the processing of images and intelligently processing them to be able to determine different things. So we have object detection. So this is what is used in self-driving cars. When the car detects an object, it knows how to steer. Then there is also facial recognition. We also mentioned that there's medical diagnosis. So people in bio are also getting into code. The reason I'm showing you these examples is to show you that every single field out there requires code these days, even if it's not standard software engineering, even if it's just AI engineering. Okay, there's reverse search engines, there's defect detection. So if you have a huge company manufacturing so many products, you'll have to check for defects and you obviously don't want to do that manually. Um, and natural language processing is basically so if computer vision is everything related to images or seeing things, natural language processing is everything related to text. So you have speech recognition. So like Siri or Jarvis, if you're into that. There's a sentiment analysis. So when a computer reads your review for a certain product, and it can just automatically tell this is either a positive or a negative review because you use words like, oh my God, this was so horrible. And it learns and then it's able to determine these things. Things like Google Translate or chatbots or autocorrect. So these are all things that can be done with AI and they require people who would code specifically for AI. Now for machine learning, so a lot of you said machine learning and how does that relate to AI? Machine learning is sort of a hot topic now. You'll hear it pretty much anywhere you go. Machine learning is a subfield of AI. Technically, most of the things people are coding these days is machine learning. Like I said, AI is a bit too ambiguous to define. So systems, they learn. Machines, so essentially machines are learning. They require previous data. They learn from experience or from like existing data, and they're able to use that experience to make new, to make new decisions that are more accurate or intelligent. So uh, this is how machines learn. Like I said, we have a series coming on machine learning, so uh, more details on that at the end of this presentation. So stay tuned for that. And machine learning can do many things. So uh, I'm sorry again for the noise. So machine learning can predict numerical values, such as predicting stock prices before they go up or down. It can answer yes or no questions. So uh, this is how they determine which ads to show you. So is customer X likely to click on this ad? And they can also group items together. So if you're checking out on Amazon, uh, I'm not sure if you've noticed it. You're here, you're, you're buying one product. They tell you these things are usually bought together. It also learns from its experience to give you new recommendations. So what is deep learning? Now, like I said, machine learning is mainly what's being used most of the time. And it's um, like the most popular thing right now. But deep learning is also a hot topic. And it does confuse people a lot of the times. What's the difference between deep learning, machine learning, AI? Uh, what does it really, where does it really start and where does it really end? So deep learning is a subset of machine learning. So here we have deep learning, we have machine learning, so a larger set, and AI is the largest set. So these are, these are all essentially subsets of each other. And deep learning is just really, just it's just mis machine learning at the end of the day. But Models imitate the human brain. There are neural networks. So, you know, if you're into bio, you know that we have neurons and they talk to each other so that our brain works. Deep learning is essentially just copying the human brain, giving it to computers. So, yeah, it's a really hot topic. It's really widely used. 
if you do, uh, sorry, if you do enter a career in deep learning, you're likely you know, to have a successful career. So uh, yeah, that's some sound advice. Uh, another thing is data science. So uh, for everyone here who's from business or finance or marketing or accounting or all of those majors, this is probably where you're, you should be headed. Uh, data science is actually growing in popularity in all the fields ever. So in pretty much any company these days, there is a requirement for a data scientist. And what data science is, it's simply the process of understanding data. So uh, data science, what it can do is that it can detect trends. So here, well, let's say we're a company and we know that people usually buy our products um, right after a major you know, event happens in the country, people go and buy our product, something like that. So you can det detect the trends when people do things or which events trigger other events. You can predict future behavior. So using this data, you get to be able to guess that, oh, you know, this user is definitely going to be interested in this product. Let's show him that. You can transform data into, uh, sorry, you can transform data into knowledge. So uh, what I mean by this, what is the difference between data and knowledge actually? Data is simply just stats, um, so numbers on a screen. Knowledge, on the other hand, is actual useful information that we can use. So here you're transforming all of these stats, all the clicks of this user, and you're turning it into knowledge about this user. So you're learning that user A, this person, you know, named user A, we took all his numerical information, we made it into knowledge that says user A is really interested in books about science fiction. And uh, he will always get recommendations about science fiction. Or we know he's into science fiction, maybe we can also show him these movies. So all of these websites, they work together, they sell each other your data. So uh, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, that's really the truth. And then they transform this data into knowledge. And like I said, it has become a buzzword in all areas. So not only software, but also finance and medicine. For medicine, let me give you an example. If I take, you know, every single uh, heart disease patient's data, okay? And I use all of these uh, things with data science to be able to predict that all, you know, I'll be able to figure out that all people who do have heart disease when they're 50, you know, they usually had something else when they were 20, or they did this X thing when they were 20 like that and then you use this data to predict you go and tell this person hey you have a risk for getting heart disease be careful it's something like that okay and enterprises use data science to understand their customers and users i already covered this well so like i said data science is a buzzword now i'm going to just clarify very quickly why it has become a buzzword so why is everyone suddenly into it why are all the companies in the world by the way uh, data science has been voted the number one job for the years 2017, 2018, 2019, and now 2020. So uh, it's it's yeah, that's the best job you could get. So in terms of salary, benefits, and uh, just status in general. Why it has become trending only in recent years and not before? Now we have huge new volumes of data. Every single click you do on the internet gets stored as data about you. That you know you are this person, your person X. You clicked on this and this and this, and all of this is being stored as data into these huge databases. And we have all this data, so we want to use it. And that's why we need data science. Another thing is now hardware is more powerful. So the theory behind data science has existed for a long time now, uh, but the hardware just wasn't really that strong. Now we have fast computers, uh, you know, supercomputers. Soon we're gonna we're gonna have quantum computers. By the way, we have an event on quantum computing this month as well, so sales promo right there. And financial growth benefits. So, uh, sorry, companies have realized, oh, this is so amazing. Companies have realized that if you employ data scientists and you actually use your existing data to you know, get insights and change some things about your comp how your company works, you get a lot of financial growth. And that has really um, inspired people to check you know, with, this, uh, with data science. Okay, and the last thing is what does data science involve? So I did explain what AI was, what ML was, what deep learning is. Data science involves a mixture of things. So it involves statistics. So do not go into data science if you hate math with every single power of your being because you're just not going to be happy. I mean, you're going to make money and have a good career, but you probably won't be happy. 
Um, it involves machine learning as well. So the way we can make all these smart data decisions is using machine learning. So that's why it's involved with AI. It uses data analytics. So as we produce results about the data, we need smart people who are data analysts to just look at them and say, oh, okay, this data here, this means X, this means Y, something like that. And then uh, data visualization. So uh, data visualization is essentially taking all the stuff and get, putting it in pretty charts and graphs. That's really it. And data engineering is, so like Yusuf mentioned, mentioned at the start of the session, databases. So data engineers are people who, you know, work with these huge volumes of data inside databases to make everything more efficient. Now, this part is a bit too ambiguous, so you can just ignore it. But now that you know the difference between data science, ML, DL, and AI, you can know that uh, you can have some sort of guide that tells you which one you actually want to get into. For programming languages, Python is the number one language recommended, but we do have some strong contenders. There is R for data science, and um, also languages like Julia and Scala. So uh, be sure to look into those. But mainly Python should be your starting point if you're in, into that. And uh, if you're into AI, trust me, it's a very rewarding career. Um, so yeah, that's really it for what AI and data science and all that really is. One thing I want to mention is Part of our upcoming events is the machine learning series. So if you're into AI, like I said, Python should be the starting point. So on Friday, this Friday, October 2nd at 6 p.m., we'll have our introduction to Python uh, event. And then we're going to have another event one week after where we're going to learn some libraries associated with machine learning in Python. And then a final event, which is basic ML with TensorFlow another week after that. No worries, you'll get emails and promotions about all of these things, but this is something we just wanted to highlight. Um, and one thing I want to mention is Intro to Python is open to all beginners of all skill, of all um, you know, different skills. So even if you don't know how to code, you should attend it. Uh, we're keeping that in mind. And for the people who do know Python, just feel free to attend event number two and three if you don't want to get bored. All right, so yeah, that's really it. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, now I'm going to take questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, because otherwise I can't see the questions. Uh, can I answer one question, uh, Hello. Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's Ryan Hure who who's asking, are coding languages divided by categories? For example, C++ is recommended for game development. Is it a norm or not? Okay, so coding languages are divided into categories, but it's not divided like this into any. It's not divided for games or for uh, uh, business applications or some uh, other th other things. So it's not divided like this. Okay, I don't I don't really know what the languages used to build games, uh, but I can tell you how the coding languages are divided. Okay, so you have high level languages which are uh, languages that uh, you can read like english like java python and all these languages okay so we can read the statement it's english okay in high level languages you have object oriented like java python okay so if you if you ever took any programming course you should know the what is object oriented and you have another part um, other than high level languages which is assembly languages okay so it's machine language where you're uh, you're building everything on your own you you everything everything on your own and you're directly talking to the hardware okay so you have to understand the hardware then code uh, assembly which is the machine language okay so mainly uh, coding languages are divided like this okay in high level languages there's many subfields also so you can know about them and one more thing guys uh, programming and coding it's like ultimate it's scene nobody knows everything so the more you know the better it is it, it's always evolving in it there's always new languages languages that are better than the old ones there's always updates on new languages there's always new things so you, you have to be up to date if you want if you're a beginner and you want to learn coding uh, it's gonna it's gonna be 
bit tough, uh, but it, it's it's a really uh, nice thing uh, to do. So first, you'll when for doing your first uh, program or something like this, you're you're gonna feel like okay, I wanna give up or it's very tough. I I don't know where's the bug. I, I don't know where's the error. So I can find the error. It's logical what I what I just did, but it's not working okay you face this but never give up because at the end everything will be okay and you can do it even if you're yeah. mechanical yeah, exactly. industrial or any kind of engineering uh, i saw some people in the chat they were when we mentioned the quantum computing event they said that uh, this would be so confusing and everything i just want to say uh, none of us are going to be explaining that so uh, we have an expert coming in she's from japan and she is a researcher at the research center for quantum computing in japan and that research center works with ibm so um, hopefully she'll be able to explain it um, so no worries guys if you're you know doubting how clear that would be so stay tuned for that. You'll receive promotions about that uh, really soon. And um, let me see other questions. So other people were debating, uh, com you know, quantum computing. Okay. So Jad asked, do companies prefer to hire one full stack developer or two specialized developers, one back end and one front end? Um, Jad, it really uh, depends. So um, a lot of the time. You know, one person cannot really do everything. Also, it depends on the amount of time you have for deployment. So do you want one person working on something and it taking them about, you know, months to complete? Or you can have two people and deploy your website in half the time. Or a team of five and deploy your website in even half the time. So, uh, and time is not the only variable here. Uh, a lot of companies do not even like full stack developers. Some people say that a full stack developer is too general. Some people say a full stack developer is just front end with some database skips. So there is a large debate on this. We can get into it forever. Um, I'm not, I personally don't have my own opinion. I wouldn't know. I'm not a CEO yet, maybe. Um, but yeah, so it depends on the company and what they like or what they need for now. So it's really an open ended question. Okay, so I hope that could give you some insight. Um, I can add okay. something, Hala, just one more yeah. quick thing. Okay, so regarding this, okay, uh, employment is based on your skills and the needs of the companies and a big real company. So the number of clients, the number of employees, their need, and uh, and your skills. So it, uh, for them, it doesn't really matter one full stack or two uh, you, you may enter a company that have uh, a team of back end of 40 30 people maybe okay so it's based on their needs and uh, your skills yeah exactly so any other questions guys so everything else i see in the chat is just uh, debates so it doesn't really count uh, anything else you want us to address we can wrap this up and the recording will be up on YouTube for anyone who missed it. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Thank you very much for attending, guys. And uh, thank you for giving us your time.